Okay, folks. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to look at an excerpt, which is a small passage um, in so in the checkpoint quiz, you're going to read this excerpt um, or read another excerpt from The Call of the Wild. It's a novel by a guy named Jack London. And we're going to practice identifying various parts of this point of view. So what is this book about? Um, Call of the Wild is about um, this dog named Buck. And he has an easy and pampered life as a dog on a California ranch. And then this gold rush in the Yukon in Alaska strikes um, near the end of 1800s. And so all these people are going up to Alaska to go find gold in the rivers. And it creates a demand for sturdy working dogs. So Buck is stolen by a ranch hand um, who has a gambling debt to pay. And he sells Buck um, to pay his debt off. And then he's put in a crate and he spends two days on a train without food or water before finally arriving at his destination. And he's at this outdoor working camp and he is now belonging to a dog handler. But we only know the guy as the man in the red sweater. So that's how Buck knows him as the man in the red sweater. So we're going to... Um, I'll give you a chunk and then I'll ask you a question. Give you a chunk and ask you a question. So here's our story. Buck rushed at the splintering wood of the crate, sinking his teeth into it, surging and wrestling with it. Wherever the hatchet fell on the outside, he was there on the inside, snarling and growling as furiously anxious to get out as the man in the red sweater was calmly intent on getting him out. Now you red eyed devil, he said, when he had made an opening sufficient for the passage of Buck's body. At the same time, he dropped the hatchet and shifted the club to his right hand. Okay. So who's telling the story? Is Buck telling the story? Is the man in the red sweater telling the story? Or is someone outside of the story telling him? So you have the option to choose, um, choose these three. Now we know that the story is about Buck, but is he the narrator? We know that the man in the red sweater is also a character. Is he the narrator? Or is it someone else telling us what they're like, what they're doing? Okay, I've got one comment, thank you. Two, nice. So we've narrowed it down. It's not Buck. If it was Buck, it would say I. He, he would be saying, I rushed the splintering wood of the crate. Now, if it was the man in the red sweater, it, if we kind of take away this, um, the dialogue, the words, that's the part that we're looking for. So it says he said. If it was the man in the red sweater, it would say I said. So it can't be the man in the red sweater, which means it is someone outside the story. So it is see someone outside the story. If it was told by either of these characters, it would be in first person and it would use those words I, but we don't see that. We say we see the he and and he and the names, those sorts of pronouns. OK, so warm up question. Next one. And Buck was truly a red-eyed devil as he drew himself together for the spring, hair bristling, mouth foaming, a mad glitter in his bloodshot eyes. Straight at the man, he launched his 140 pounds of fury, surcharged with the pent passion of two days and nights. In midair, just as his jaws were about to close on the man, he received a shock that checked his body and brought his teeth together with an agonizing clip. He whirled over, fetching the ground on his backside, um, on his back and side. He had never been struck by a club in his life and did not understand. So why does Buck not understand the shock of the club? Our clue is in this last sentence. So the dog's about ready to, to bite the man in the red sweater and the man in the red sweater has a club and wax him with it. 
Now let's remember this is the end of the 1800s. This was over 100 years ago. There's um, there's like no such thing as official animal cruelty. There's no police to call. This is the wild north. Why would a dog like Buck not understand the shock of the club? It says he had never been struck by a club in his life and did not understand. So I'll give you another second. What can we narrow it down to? We can take away A. We're sure it hurts. He is thinking, so we can take away D, which leaves us between B and C. Which one? Yeah, he's never felt that before. Absolutely. It is C. He's never felt that before. Okay, I think I'm losing some of you guys. Come on back. With a snarl that was part bark and more scream, he was again on his feet and launched into the air. And again, the shot came, and he was brought crushingly to the ground. This time, he was aware that it was the club. But his madness knew no caution. A dozen times he charged, and as often the club broke the charge and smashed down on him. What? Okay, what is this guy doing? He's like beating up this dog. What is he trying to do? Is he trying to rescue Buck? Is he trying to show Buck he's the master? Is he trying to punish Buck for misbehaving? Or is he trying to make friends with the dog? Is that how you make friends with people? You like bring a club and whack them? So we, we can, we, again, we can cut out A and D. Yeah. We know he's trying to, so these two are, are similar and they're kind of connected. We know he's trying to punish him, but if you're trying to punish someone, what does that mean that you are? That he's the master of the dog. Yeah, he's trying to show Buck that he's the master. Because he's got to break this dog in. Okay. Um, after a particularly fierce blow, he crawled to his feet two days to rush. He staggered limply about the blood flowing from nose and mouth and ears, his beautiful coat sprayed and flecked with bloody slaver. Then the man advanced and deliberately dealt him a frightful blow on the nose. All the pain he had endured was nothing compared with the ex exquisite agony of this, with a roar that was almost lion-like in its ferocity. He again hurled himself at the man, but the man, shifting the club from right to left, coolly caught him by the under jaw, at the same time wrenching downwards and backwards. Buck described a complete circle in the air and half another then crashed to the ground on his head and chest. For the last time he rushed, the man struck the shrewd blow he had purposely withheld for so long and Buck crumpled up and went down, knocked utterly senseless. Whoa. This guy is like going at it, beating up the dog. He's no slouch at dog breaking. That's what I say. One of the men on the wall cried enthusiastically. Druther break um, chaoses any day and twice on Sundays was the reply of the driver as he climbed on the wagon and started the horses. Buck's senses came back to him, but not his strength. He lay where he had fallen. And from there, he watched the man in the red sweater. Answers to the name of Buck. The man um, soliloquized. That's a hard word to say. From the saloon. That means he, he said. Um, quoting from the saloon keeper's letter, which had announced the consignment of the crate and contents. Well, Buck, my boy, he went on in a genial voice. We've had our little ruction, and the best thing we can do is to let it go at that. You've learned your place, and I know mine. Be a good dog, and all will go well, and the goose hang high. Be a bad dog, and I'll whale the stuffing out of you. Understand? As he spoke, he fearlessly patted the head which he had so mercilessly pounded. And though Buck's hair involuntary uh, bristled at the touch of his hand, he endured it without protest. When the man brought him water, he drank eagerly, and later bolted a generous meal of raw meat, chunk by chunk, from the man's hand. Okay. So... Now that we've seen this scene, 
do we know what the the man in the red sweater is thinking? So take that little um, circle and drag it above the true or the false. Do we know what the man is thinking? We can definitely see his actions. We definitely see his actions and we hear what he's saying. But do we know, do we get his brain, his thought process? Let me go back to this one. Okay. So we'll go with your gut. Do we know, do we know what he's thinking? What I mean is, does the author tell us what he's thinking? We can infer the reader. That's a little distinction. So like we, we can guess what he's thinking. Um, we do not know what the man is thinking. We only get um, Buck's thoughts. We get his, his voices. We get the man's voice. But we don't get his actual thoughts. The reader, or sorry, the author's kind of, um, might be being a little tricky right here. They're giving us enough information that you're putting together, um, you're putting together inferences and you're drawing conclusions. And so you're thinking what he's thinking, but it hasn't said it yet. So the, the, the correct answer to this question, we know what the man in the red sweater is thinking is false. We don't know. We see his actions and we hear what he says. But we don't know what he's thinking. He was beaten. He knew that, but he was not broken. He saw once and for all that he stood no chance against the man with the club. He had learned the lesson, and in all his life after, he never forgot it. That club was a revelation. It was his introduction to the reign of primitive law, and he met the introduction halfway. The facts of life took on a fiercer aspect, and while he faced that aspect uncowed, he faced it with all the latent cunning of his nature aroused. So this means like he's learning the pecking order. If you have chickens at your house um, or if you might maybe have seen other chickens, they will peck the weak one. Um, and so that the strong ones, they look nicer, they look healthier um, and they will literally like peck and, and attack the weaker ones. Buck is learning the pecking order. He's learning who's boss and it's not him. So why does Buck finally give up? Does the man surrender? Does Buck feel safe? Does he know he doesn't have a chance against the club? Or does he want to make friends with the man? So we're putting ourselves in Buck's shoes. Why does Buck finally give in? This is our clue right here. He saw once and for all that he stood no chance against a man with a club. So he saw once and for all that he stood no chance against the man with a club. Yes, he knows he doesn't have a chance against the club. Um, he knows he's going to get beat to, mm, if he's not a good dog. Okay. So this is our question. Um, is the narrator a character in the story? I'm going to read the excerpt. As the days went by, other dogs came in crates at the ends of their rope, some docilely, that means um, like obedient, and some raging and roaring as he had come. And one and all, he watched them pass under the dominion of the man with the red sweater again and again. As he looked at each brutal performance, the lesson was driven home to Buck. The man with the club was a lawgiver, a master to be obeyed, though not necessarily um, consolated. Of this last, Buck was never guilty, though he did see beaten dogs that fawned upon the man and wagged their tails and licked his hand. He also saw one dog that would neither um, consolate or obey, finally killed in the struggle for mastery. So consolate is like, um, you know, being a good boy, being o super obedient to the point that you're like, let, let me go get your slippers kind of a thing. 
Lex like, I'm not begging for attention, but I'll listen to what you say. So based on what we've read overall so far, is the character, um, or sorry, is the narrator a character in our story? So yes, is the character in the story true or false? Our narrator is not a character in the story. So we have two characters, Buck and the man with the red sweater. Is our story being told by either of those two people? Because if it is told by those, then they would use those I, me, myself. So we know that the narrator is not a character in the story because th this is not from Buck's perspective. It's focused about him. It's a, okay, it's about him but it's not being told by him. So this story is about Buck, but it's not being told by Buck. And it's about the man with the, with the red sweater, but it's not, a, uh, it's not being told by them. So what point of view is this? If it is not being told by either the dog or the man with the red sweater, then we, then we can cross out right away first person. So this is where it all comes together in our last question. Um, we know it's not first person. So we know it's third person because it uses people's names and the he and they and the him, those sorts of pronouns. Is it limited and focused on the feelings and the inner thoughts of one character or is it omniscient and is it focused on the thoughts and feelings of all of the characters? So that's what we have to decide now. Is it limited and focused on the thoughts and feelings of just one character? Or is it omniscient and is it focused on the thoughts and feelings of all of the characters? So I'll give you another little hint. We get Buck's thoughts and feelings. We hear his thought process. But we never hear the thought process of the man with the with the red sweater. We can guess his motives and we infer his motives, but the author doesn't directly tell us. Like we don't hear his thoughts saying like, oh, I can't wait to get home and eat a bowl of soup. So if it's just focused on the thoughts and feelings of Buck and it's being told about him, about our main character, Buck, it is limited. Good job. Someone's on the ball. Someone's on the ball. Okay. So I want you to take the 6-1 checkpoint. We're taking the checkpoint quiz instead of the quiz quiz because this one focuses just on the call of the wild and the other one has a little bit too much going on in it. So what it does is every time there's a question, it gives you, it gives you the whole excerpt you do not have to read the excerpt four times. What I do recommend you do is that you reread it once at the beginning of the quiz and then answer all the questions. So you can scroll past the other copies of the text, but be careful to not scroll past the question. So I believe there's five questions about the text. And um, that's what we're doing right now, is we're taking that 6.1 checkpoint, but you don't have to reread the passage every single time. That's like, that's a lot. Don't do that. 